Hi. So I'm going to New Zealand tomorrow. It's the first time I've traveled internationally since the great shutdown. And step one in doing that is taking Remy out to Glenn's place at Pet Resorts to stay for the week. I miss him already. Traveling and teaching is like, it's my favorite thing to do. I miss my family whenever I'm traveling, but teaching to groups is what makes me happy. Um, I feel like I have some relevant information that people can benefit from, um, so it's always worth the trip. Thanks, man. My secret shame is how important airline lounge access is to me. <laughs> Just a sign. This is, to, to keep your attention all day, this is theatre as much as it is information. It's infotainment, okay? So, it's all very well and good, Pat. Build desire, blah, 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 but how, right? Like, how do you actually do that with a dog? We've talked about how to do it with uh, food, but here's what I do know of play, is that we talk about how it's biologically fulfilling, that food, the dog needs it to survive. Well, they need play also. If you don't play with your dog, it will play with someone else or something else. You see a lot of people who are strict on the food, they only train with food, right? And they never play with their dog. First of all, you're missing a huge part of the motivation you can use. There's gonna be a huge gap in your relationship with the dog. It becomes very transactional only when you're just training with food. But your dog, when people say he doesn't like to play, I promise you, he does, he's just doing it in a way you don't understand. So it's morning, day two in New Zealand. I always forget, this is the third time I've been to New Zealand and like I forget what a beautiful country it is. Uh, the first day of the seminar went really well, I think everybody seemed to take on all the information. It's in this really cool location, it's a doggy daycare that's in an old uh, greenhouse. I think we got about 60 people there. Uh, everything from police to sporting dog people to pet dog owners and pack walkers. The pack walking stuff is a really uh, interesting challenge for me. It's a fair way outside of my wheelhouse. It's not something I deal in very much and it's going to represent a unique challenge for today as we work some of those dogs and we have to discuss you know, the levels of arousal and intensity that we can bring those dogs into while also being able to maintain their ability to live safely in a pack with a bunch of other dogs. Thanks for joining me as we go through this. Here's uh, one last look at this incredible sunrise. Who, who wants to be my dog? So, before you come out, I need someone that's happy to go to a fairly high level. That's you? I nearly went to 12. See that? Can I do 10 again? See how your dog takes the reinforcer? It's almost identical to the way the dog does the behavior. So, dog knows the behavior. You can sharpen it up a little bit, but the way to get a faster, more powerful entry is just faster, more powerful reaction to the food. The hold is for me like one of the most important exercises. I teach puppies straight away. I like I like when you bite shit as much as you like it when you bite shit. Sit. Alright, your dog. Go 
grab him. Work him on that grip, help him out. I am not super experienced with deaf dog. So what is your marker system and how do you communicate with this deaf dog? I'm shooting in the fucking dark. But what I would look at is a tactile marker where if I'm sitting around and the dog is then like, there's a problem out that way, I would want to be able to touch that dog somewhere. That means turn around and take food from me and change your mind about what's going on. The same way I would use a clicker and we'll excite the dog a little bit. Now touch her on the butt. <laughs> Embarrassing me. Well, that's it. It's a New Zealand seminar all done. Uh, went super well. Had an awesome time with the working spots yesterday. A deaf dog that had some reactivity issues, which is the first time I've ever dealt with that. I've never done that before. Now today, uh, we're meant to go pack walking. I don't know if that's still gonna happen. I'm waiting to hear, but the weather is not the, not the kind of weather I wanna go out in anyway. So it turns out pack walking does happen in the rain. <laughs>